we're here. So let's start with the, the lesson five. Uh, as we mentioned yesterday in, in Slack, so we will basically divide the group uh, in two. Uh, so the ones continuing with the Open GIS lab, oh, GIS lab. Uh, GIS course will uh, stay in this auditorium uh, and the GeoPython slash introduction to quantitative geology uh, students will move uh, up to C123. Uh, but, but let's stay here for a short moment in the, in the beginning. Uh, first of all, uh, how did it go with the exercise four? Uh, did you have issues? Was it okay? Any, any, any questions about, about the exercise? I think we had some, some comments in here. Didn't, didn't start, start working, working on, on it until 1 a.m. today. Uh, that, that might, might be, be a problem, problem. Uh, but uh, maybe not that technical one. Uh, I think it's difficult to know in which order you put in the different things in the for loop. Uh, that is a, maybe a good, good question and, and actually relates to the actual uh, exercise. Uh, so, so maybe, maybe just a short comment on, on that. that. How, how many, many of you feel it difficult to understand how to work with the four loops? And, uh, and in which order should you put things in there? One, two, three. So there are a few. So, so, so the basic idea in the, the for loop, uh, as we went through in week three, I, if I remember right, uh, is that basically when, when you define the for loop and then you intend uh, the call block that should start doing things. So then it's all about basically kind of uh, understanding and, uh, and, and putting things in that order uh, that is logical for your task. So it is really important, for example, if you remember that in, in any programming, uh, language you should, well, at least in, in Python, which is uh, the, the language that we use here, uh, you should define the things in such order that the first thing that you set like, uh, or put a line of code, that will be executed. And if you, for example, uh, define variables in, in incorrect order, so that the, uh, for example, you try to call or use a variable before it is actually uh, defined, so then you, you get problems in there. Uh, but, but maybe, maybe if, I don't know what, what kind of issues did you have in, in, in the loops, but I guess kind of that logical thing is, is really important, <laughs> uh, the logical order of setting things. Uh, if you import a single function, uh, you have for blah, 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 forever. Mm. What, what happens, happens if you, you already had parsing in the implement? Yeah, that, that is, is a good, good question. So, so the, the, the idea, idea is that if you have a script, for example, that we practiced, uh, and, and then you import some function from there, uh, and the question is that if you would have same uh, similar function in your main script with the same name, so what will happen? What will happen is that basically depending on which order you do the import and, and define the function. So either one of those will basically override the other one. So if you typically you import or specify your import statements in the really beginning of the, of the script. So, and, and then after that you define, for example, your own functions. So basically the function that you have uh, defined uh, the, the latest, that will be the kind of active function and the earlier one uh, will be overwritten. So it's important uh, to kind of understand this uh, and it might be good to, for example, import uh, your uh, function library as something and then you can use the, like, my functions dot and then the function name. So then this won't happen. So that's a, it was a good question. Um, I guess we had a few <laughs> repetitions of this one. Uh, but yeah, uh, 
I, I hope these clarify a bit of these questions. questions. Uh, are, are there, there any, any other, other questions, questions in this part? Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 So, so, so indeed, now, now the, the we, we have, have changed, changed a bit. How do we do the creating stuff? So now, uh, from now on, we will basically send you in Slack uh, the feedback kind of files. So you will receive a PDF file with uh, kind of a, a lot of detail about what kind of things. Uh, you, you managed to solve successfully, successfully and, and if there were some errors, there will be kind of comments and, and uh, error messages, messages basically, basically showing that, that okay, this should have been this and it wasn't. Was uh, uh, so that, that will uh, happen. For exercise three, hopefully today or tomorrow, and then exercise four, the deadline was today, so we'll start grading. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Uh, any, any others, others? or other, other questions? questions? If not, uh, we, we could maybe uh, go back to the web page. Uh, and indeed, so the idea, idea now is that uh, we will split. So Dave's group will go to Exactum C123, uh, starting with NumPy uh, lesson or NumPy things, and the other group who stays here starts with pandas. The reason why we split uh, these two uh, from, from each, each other, other is that, that the experience from last year was that uh, uh, Pandas was, was interesting also for, for you, but, but then, then like when continuing the introduction to quantitative geology, there, there started to be issues that the Pandas didn't fit too well with that. Uh, I don't know if you want to say any. Yeah, uh, I guess it's, it's, yeah, it's not really working. Okay, well, I'll just talk loudly. So, um, yeah, the issue is basically that Pandas and NumPy can do a lot of the same things, and in this introduction to the quantitative geology course, we use NumPy pretty much exclusively in period two. So if you're in that course, it would be good to come and, and start learning how to use NumPy now rather than learning Pandas, because last year we had lots of people who were confused about the differences in reading a file in NumPy versus reading a file in Pandas. They're very similar, but they're not identical, and the little differences led to a lot of confusion and frustration. So this year, yeah, we're splitting into two groups, and uh, as it says here, you know, that's it makes sense if you're in one of those two courses or plan to take it for those two courses to go with the corresponding group. If you're not planning to continue on into either one of those two courses, it's sort of up to you which one of the two options you would would want to go with. And uh, yeah, there's a question. What do I need to Like I do, I don't, like I just take this GeoPython course and don't go any further. So what's the big difference between Pandas and NumPy? Yeah, so NumPy is designed to work with numerical data to be efficient in terms of computing with basically large arrays of, of numbers. Um, Pandas, I think, is designed more around the idea of working with data that's typically in like spreadsheet form or, or data files that might have multiple different kinds of data like character strings and numbers and other things mixed together in one sort of file. It's mm -hmm. easier to load that kind of data into Pandas. And NumPy is a little bit more difficult because NumPy is more focused on just efficiency and, uh, and computing with mainly with the numbers. So, so if, if you are kind of, if, if your background is more on kind of mathematical side, like uh, dealing with matrices and doing kind of matrix calculations, then I would suggest to, to use NumPy. But if you are kind of more familiar of idea of Excel sheets and doing calculations in there, then I might recommend using Pandas. So they, they are really similar and they, they are both really powerful in terms of data uh, analysis, uh, but there are kind of differences. Uh, how, how easy it is. But for, for example, example on Dave's course, uh, you, you will do a lot of kind of uh, formulas and calculations based on different formulas. So in that, that case, it, it is actually easier to just use uh, arrays in, in NumPy. Well, you don't know yet what those are, yeah. uh, but, but easier than using Pandas uh, kind of data structures. Yeah. yeah, and I think that the other important thing is that the lesson materials for both are going to be on the course page. So if you go to one or the other, it's not like you can't then go and, and 
look at the course materials. We're going to record the lectures for both as well so that that will be available. So if you can, for those of you who sit in and watch the pandas thing here, you can go and check out what, what is uh, the story with NumPy if you'd like, um, because it is sort of underlying a lot of what pandas does. But uh, in terms of dealing with data files, I would be willing to concede that pandas is easier to, to deal with uh, heterogeneous data files. Yeah, it's, uh, well, what I have learned with differences in NumPy and pandas is that pandas is a bit more flexible uh, in, in, in that sense. But, yeah. Okay, okay, but maybe, maybe um, is there still mm -hmm. something else, or do we? I don't know. Are there any other questions about like us splitting into two groups, or anything remaining about this exercise number four? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So also the exercise will be kind of split it into two. They they are basically handling the same problem. They're quite similar. Uh, but but. but because, because there, there are, are some differences in the packages so that they have, they have been modified a bit. Yeah. And I think it's true that you can basically do everything you can do in Pandas with NumPy and vice versa, but sometimes doing some of the things in Pandas that are easy are, is not easy to do in NumPy. So um, the lesson content is similar, the exercises are similar, but they're not identical.